for protecting your data with Drobo and Retrospect backup. Uh, so before we get started, we want to go over the agenda and ground rules, some housekeeping. Um, we would like everyone to stay on mute as much as possible. And if you have any questions, there is the chat in the corner or the Q&A that you can click on and send us messages directly for any questions and answers you do have. Um, we will be going over a Drobo overview, uh, then a retrospect overview, kind of a piece on how we work together, and then a demo. JG will go over a demo on how uh, Drobo works with Retrospect, and then we'll have a Q&A session. And then uh, one of the biggest reasons why most of you are probably also here is that giveaway. So we will be doing a 5N2 and a Drobo Retrospect desktop uh, giveaway. So you have to stay through the whole webinar to actually win the giveaway. And there'll be more details on how to claim the prize uh, if you do win. So um, we just want uh, to go ahead and get started then. So I'm going to introduce you to the speakers. So myself, Nick Minocha, I'm the director of products here at Drobo. I've been at Drobo since 2015 and uh, been in the industry uh, for about 10 years now, held positions at Apple and Brocade uh, formerly. And uh, JG is with us too. He's the general manager of Retrospect. I'll let him introduce himself real quick. JG, go ahead. Thank you, Nick. My name is JG Hathcock. I've been with Retrospect since, well, over 20 years now. Um, Retrospect Incorporated kind of spun out by itself in 2011, and then we're fortunate enough to join the store-centric family uh, just recently, so we're all very happy to be here. Thank you very much, Nick. Yeah, thanks, JG. So at store-centric, our purpose is to protect our customers' digital information. So the vision is unifying exceptional technology to create a world-class data storage company. Now, each of these brands stand alone and have their own place in the market. That's why we keep all these brands and the brand names separate. So Drobo has the SMB to kind of uh, prosumer to SMB space. Nexan has the SMB to enterprise space. And Vexata is that high flash based enterprise space. So to kind of tie these together, we wanted to acquire another company, which is Retrospect. Uh, and they do backup. So what other better piece to put this stuff together than acquiring a company that does backup so well and easy? So that is kind of the store-centric message is getting all these pieces together to be the essence of protecting the customer's digital information. So that's kind of the store-centric message, purpose, and vision. So with that, we're going to go into a little bit of the Drobo overview for those of you who don't know. So uh, we sold already over about 450 units. Uh, we have over 50 plus industry awards, uh, 21 distributors around the world, and uh, Drobo was founded in 2005. So why is Drobo unique? We have things that our competitors don't. Our light indicators are a great way of showing you how the Drobo works without launching a GUI or UI just to see the status of your Drobo. The other thing is from our magnetic front cover to our drive bays, there's no tools required. You never need to grab a screwdriver when you're working with Drobo. And we have our own patented Beyond RAID technology. So for those who don't know what RAIDs are, you don't have to know about it. We take care of all of that complexity for you. And in case of power failures, we have a battery backup for just writing the final writes to the cache. So that way we can always, always power, come back up without any failures. So that's just definitely something unique to Drobo itself. All right, let's go to the next slide here. And then, so understanding the Drobo lights, it's very simple. If you can understand a traffic light, you can manage a Drobo. We've made it so simple that the bottom capacity lights on a five bay will show you 10% of inc uh, incremental capacity used. And on the right side, you have the dry bay lights. If you see everything is green, which you typically see, that means everything's good. Solid yellow, uh, you, you know that there's a drive that needs to be added there. If it's a blinking yellow and green, it's running through data protection. One of the only other best things about a Drobo is you can still use it while it's running through data protection. And if a drive, if a drive bay light is red, the drive is dead. You simply just replace it. And the beautiful thing about Drobos is you can have a single disk redundancy or a dual disk redundancy, and you can flip at that at any given time, provided you have the excess capacity. So that is the other nice thing about you know, having a Drobo is it pretty much manages itself. All you have to do is look at the drive bay lights and you'll know exactly what to do with your Drobo. And then kind of how we stack up against the competitors as a whole, you know, we're highly flexible, we're easy to use, 
we support third-party apps on our NAS products. Um, and then we have SSD acceleration through hybrid uh, storage and things with SSD caching. Um, and then we have our advanced RAID technology with our Beyond RAID that lets you mix and match drives, use different drive capacities, and even different drive uh, speeds. It's, it's just truly easy to use the drives you have around you and get started. Obviously, if you want the most performance, you use the same drive type and the same drive capacity down the line. And we have a drive recommended page uh, on our website that basically walks you through what drives works the best with what types of drovos. And it's just easy to expand. Um, even our 8 bay units from our DAS side go all the way up to 128 terabytes. So that's a lot of room for, for you to grow into the storage you really need to. And from offering entry level 5 bay products all the way to our 8 bay products, we definitely have a product for any person. This kind of goes over a Drobo overview of the product family. The 5C is our entry level DAS or our direct attached storage units. We have a single USB-C uh, port on this and it's five 3.5 inch bays. And our next one up is a 5D3. This features two Thunderbolt 3 ports that work perfectly with any Mac. And we do have that USB-C uh, port on that as well. So you have three total ports that can be used with PC or Mac. Uh, so PC, you can definitely use that USB-C port there. Um, and this is really, the DAS series is really geared to the, like a primary working drive. It's just like an external drive on steroids. It's just a super simple, easy to use box. And both of these five bays go up to 64 terabytes. And then we have our 8D, which is our 8-bay DAS, which is our professional level DAS. This goes all the way up to 128 terabytes on a single volume and up to 256 terabytes on a storage pool. So plenty of room to grow in this. It's a Mac only product with two Thunderbolt 3 ports. So it's the perfect thing for any creative professional. And then in our NAS line, we, have, we start as low as with the 5N2, uh, which is our five bay uh, direct uh, NAS product. So it's our network attached over one gig ethernet. So we have two ports on either. So you can always use port bonding and failover protection. And then our eight bays are all rack mountable. So you can actually stack and rack uh, our, either our NAS or SCAN, SCAN iSCSI products. And that's what you see here on the extreme right is our eight bay uh, BA10i. And with that, I'm gonna hand it off to JG to give you an overview of the retrospect product line. JG? Thank you, Nick. So first, and many of you may already know this, you know, why do you need to do backup? A lot of people, oddly enough, just think that their, their discs are gonna work fine forever and that nothing's ever gone wrong. But, but accidents, theft, fire, floods, they can all happen. I've got two stories personally that I, I like. One is a, a colleague of mine, a fellow programmer. He was on his bed typing away and he has a dog and the dog grabbed the cable to it and yanked the whole computer, his laptop off of the bed and it crashed the drive. Fortunately, he's, you know, using the product retrospect and I think he lost like 15 minutes of work. So, and he was up and running uh, that day, just went down, got a new drive, popped it in, did restore and he was back in business. Uh, also a previous company I used to work with, Wild Packets, their entire building burnt down with all of their data and uh, they were about to do a new, a new release. And I think they lost maybe a week or two, you know, that's putting all their business back together with all their, their infrastructure and operations. So that kind of thing is not something that all businesses can recover from. We can move on. So these are the, uh, the reasons why Retrospect does such a great job as a data protection solution for both consumers and small and medium businesses. Uh, the first up is I would point out that it is a complete data protection package. We're going to talk a little bit later on about other competitors, you know, Time Machine, Carbon Copy Cloner. These products are all great at what they do, but they're not, they're not a complete solution, right? Either they don't do backup or they don't do duplicate or they don't do archive or they don't have encryption built in. Uh, Retrospect has all of those features. Uh, endpoint protection, we're referring to what are you backing up? And again, some backup solutions, they don't really do backup of servers, right? Others don't really back up laptops. They want you to put everything onto a, a, onto a local uh, file system and they're going to back that up. Uh, we have complete endpoint protection. And then one last thing on this slide, just to cover it, is cloud backup. That's a relatively recent thing for us. It's, it's been, we've been doing this for now two, three years. Uh, we go up to 20 different cloud storage providers. Uh, that's including people like Amazon AWS and Google 
but also Dropbox, and, and again, it's a long list. We'll be seeing that, by the way, in our demo later on. We can move on. So this is kind of a visual representation of the previous slide. There are a couple of things that are, are I want to call out here. One is email. Uh, we do back up email uh, as a, as a SMTMP uh, IMAP service. And so that's something we're going to be using now that we are integrating in with SourceCentric. We were using Google G Suite. They use Office Outlook. And we're going to be backing that up. We've actually been backing that up all along. We're going to be migrating that using our own tool uh, to get that back up in shape. The uh, other thing I'll point out is the servers. Uh, notice the different icons. We do back up Mac. We do back up Windows. We do, we do back up Linux machines. And we can back them up to either a Mac or a Windows uh, server. And then lastly, on the bottom of this is uh, this is, can all be monitored through our dashboard. This is either locally in the, uh, the application. You're going to be seeing the Mac version of this in our demo today. And uh, also, we have uh, a, a new service where you can send the data, the analytic data, up to our cloud. And then you can monitor your backup solution to see how it's going on any kind of browser, including your phone. OK, we can move on. So here's the retrospect product line. We, uh, you know, Nick had a good slide of where we're trying to kind of integrate across the, the, the platforms here. So whether you're backing up just one computer, you know, where you only need one copy of retrospect solo, and maybe you're backing up to a 5C or you're backing up a, a DAS to a 5C, something like that, that, that's all a good thing. Going all the way up through, say, multi-server, where you're backing up 50 different servers, you can back up to 150 endpoints that are like desktops. And again, you're going to be wanting a, a bigger, a bigger Drobo, something that's got more, more performance and more storage space. And then we also do virtual um, VMware and Hyper-V solutions. And so we have a virtual product for that. Okay, we can move on. All right, time for the demo. What I'm going to be showing you today is the Mac version of Retrospect. Uh, we do have a Windows product. The UI looks a little different, but the feature set is the same. So we do have all the demos set up for both Windows and Mac. If you go to retrospect.com forward slash demo, uh, I know JG is showing you the Mac version right now, um, but we do have the Windows version on the website as well. So we've made a really nice landing page of, you know, how Drobo works really well with retrospect. So that's also there to, for everyone to access real quick so they can get quick views of how it works and syncs. It actually is pretty slick. It, with one click, you can set it all up and it just starts doing your backups for you. It's, it's one of the easiest things I've ever used and I actually use it every day now. So it, it's, it's actually replaced my backup I was using traditionally on my Mac with Time Machine and it's just far more robust. And so I, all I did was I just selected where the destination was and chose one click backup, right? And that, that created this script, this one click backup script. And the sources are these smart tags. That means that if I add a client later on, uh, that it'll just be part of my, my existing backup solution uh, already. And again, we're going to this one click de destination. We can go and see what that looks like. That's, that's this one right here, right? That is going to this, this Drobo, right? So what we can do though, is we can also set up a transfer script that will transfer the data from the one-click backup to the cloud, and that can be on a schedule. So you can set these, these scripts up, these transfer schedules over to do the transfers, you know, either every day or every week or every month. You can also set up media sets for, um, you can also set up media sets for, um, for, for doing actions like saying, I want to do archives where I'm going to transfers, or grooms where you're going to do other things. So let's just go ahead and create that script. So this is going to be basically our offsite, right? So we're going to set up our offsite transfer. We're going to choose copy media set or copy backup, actually, it'll be easier. And so for our sources, right, we're going to choose, we're, we're backing up from, or we're transferring from the one click destination to this S3 cloud that I've already set up. That was my Julia Child moment where I, I already previously added the, the cloud. And we also have rules. 
These are selectors where you can say, when I do my transfer, maybe I don't want to transfer everything. Maybe I only want to transfer user data, right? User files and settings. I don't want to transfer the whole OS. Or maybe I do want to transfer uh, the whole system, but I only want to do that once a month, right? To try and save your, your, your bandwidth, your performance, things like that. Retrospect has a lot of things. We also can set up a different kind of schedule. We have a very complicated scheduling system here. So um, this is just saying a weekly, weekly backup. We're gonna do uh, every Friday. And uh, gonna click save here. And you can tell by the icons that we've now set up a schedule, right? So that will happen every Friday. All right. And then again, this is our dashboard. We don't have anything going right this exact second here, but uh, this would be showing up. Also, you can see this on the, uh, the cloud. All right. I think that we can now uh, go back to the slides that you were showing, Nick. Yeah. All righty. And then we're going to put it into Q&A. So I've got a few questions here lined up for you, JG. Uh, first question is from, where is it? Uh, oh yeah, David Lind. He goes, I primarily uh, am interested in a PC to Drobo. So 5N2, if you can talk a little bit about that, how the backup would work, mainly files, not so much all the restore. I can always buy for another PC and uh, or hand or hand device. So I think they want to know of how the PC and Drobo work together. So it's really the very, thank you, Nick. It's really very much the same kind of process. Again, the UI looks a little different. It's a, the, the Mac is a more modern, modern looking UI, but the, um, the feature set is the same. You can do the same sets, the same kind of thing. You can back up to a Drobo, you can back up to the cloud, you can transfer from one to the other. You can use the same sort of selectors and grooming options and scheduling options. It's all, it's all the same. All right. And uh, can Retrospect back up a computer and then restore it to uh, dissimilar hardware? Yes, uh, especially for the Windows, we have a dissimilar product. It's actually one of our, our, our strong feature sets. We're doing dissimilar back restore. All righty. And uh, one question I got from a private message. It says, how does it differ from Time Machine, the retrospect backup? Oh, right. So again, Time Machine's a, a fine product. You know, it's, it looks great. It, it's, it's wonderful when it's working. One of the many challenges is that it's not always easy to know if Time Machine actually did, did the job. You know, what's, what's the state of things when you go to do their stores? Are they, are they going to be there? And so retrospect has a lot of, you know, monitoring features built in. We have things like selectors. It's kind of challenging to set up a time machine backup to say, I only want to back up these kind of files or those kind of files. You can do exclusions, but it's a very limited system. So it's just a, it's just a much simpler, a much simpler backup solution that is really only going to get you so far. And then there's another question here is does retrospect work with Linux and specifically Debian? And yes, we do. We have clients for, for backing up the Linux systems, the, the specific Linux distros, that gets covered on our website. If you go to our, our product page, it talks about the, the various ones that we've actually certified. All right, and then we have a question here from David Crew. I think it's more of a Drobo, Drobo directed question. Uh, better error reporting when drives are reported as failed or bad. Uh, yeah, so in our AD, we already started a user event log uh, thing that we're gonna be bringing down to all the product lines. Uh, so that will eventually come in there. Um, and then when using a 5N2 with retrospect, does, the, does it use the entire drive? So the question is when they uh, have a retrospect with a 5N2, how does it uh, parse the data across? Will it eventually use up the whole 5N2 or do you s set up a specific share? No, I'm sorry, was that, was that for you, Nick, or was that for me? Uh, they were just asking a general question of how the retrospect software uh, uses the Drobo as, you know, it, does it stay within its share or does it start expanding to the whole entire Drobo? Um, so you get to choose, right? You can, you can set it up and when you set up the, uh, the media set, um, you can pick out, you can say, yeah, use the, use the entire available space or you can limit it and say, hey, don't go beyond this, this number of, you know, this amount of storage. And that can be either as a percentage or just a straight, you know, number of, number of gigs. 
All righty. And on a Windows system, do you need Microsoft AKI to restore the OS? Um, that is a complicated thing. That is what we would recommend you do. How about that? Okay, perfect. Uh, let me see if I can find one more here. Here, while, while, while we're doing this, can so let, me, let me go back to the sharing, just to talk about the, um, this is for the uh, setting up the space. So back on the one-click destination here for underneath the members, you'll notice it says space use, space free, and space total. One of the things uh, to talk about is that, that Drobo does, you know, because you can expand it, uh, it, it will say how much space it could be because you could, after all, keep, you know, as you're going along, you could just pop out a drive, put in a new drive, expand your space. And so we're showing the maximum it could be. You can say, no, no, I don't want you to use that, that much space. I only want you, in fact, to be, you know, uh, you know, a, 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 much, a much smaller space, right? I only want you to be, you know, eight, eight, eight terabytes or something like that, and, or, or, or four terabytes or whatever it is that you're, you're wanting to limit this to, to, to keep that to, to that space. Okay. All right. And then hopefully we have, explain, hopefully that explain that. We did have one more question. So a customer, a long, long line customer with us says they have, they have an old Drobo FS NAS uh, Drobo and they're wondering if uh, retrospect will be able to work with that Drobo FS, the older NAS unit. If, if the OS can see the, uh, the drive, then retrospect can use it. Yep. So perfect. So, even if you have an older Drobo, we do encourage you to always get a newer, faster Drobo, but uh, it will work with the existing Drobo. You can always think of backup being, you know, like, you know, JG mentioned, there's a three, two, one solution here of having an offsite backup as well. That, that is very important. Uh, so, you know, not only backing up your data, but having your data just on your Drobo, it's not really backed up. It's just your primary source of data. Most of the time you're storing on the Drobo. So having a backup option and backing up to multiple Drobos with NAS, our newer NASes can take advantage of our Drobo DR system that's completely free as a software base, but will allow you to kind of mix and match between the two. So you can set one as a single directional sync to the other Drobo. So if you have two 5N2s, you'll be able to easily sync those together, even if they're in offsite locations. Yes. And, and again, with retrospect, these, these destinations are are, you know, we're treating them, when I say we're treating them the same, we're not like, oh, you can't do this to that. You have to redo something else. If you've got the one Drobo and you want to do transfers to another Drobo because you're, you're, you're needing to expand beyond it or, or for whatever performance reasons you're wanting to go to a new one, you can just transfer those all over and just keep going with that. It's, it's no problem. Perfect. It seems like if you guys are raising your hands, just put the questions in the chat and we'll definitely try and get it to as many as possible. And if we don't get to it here, we will try and answer as many as possible and send those offline to you guys. Uh, we'll try and put all these together here. Um, got a current new, I currently use a retrospect backup on everything up to a Western digital external drive with Drobo device, uh, essentially replace the Western digital external device. I mean, I think the easiest answer to that is yes, obviously, we can uh, definitely do that. Uh, another big yeah, question. I certainly can. Yeah, another big question is, are we going to be integrating uh, Retrospect more closely with the Drobo product line? Yes, absolutely. Uh, now that we are under one store center brand name, that is obviously our goal to make it a lot more seamless. That will be coming up in future uh, kind of roadmap planning ideas. We definitely want to integrate both brands as closely as possible, along with, you know, looking further down the line. Let me see if I can find a few more here. Oh, it says, uh, so what are the advantage of uh, over carbon copy cloner and backblaze to uh, using, using retrospect and can it create a bootable backup? So we don't do bootable backups yet. That's uh, something that we're, we're certainly looking into, but we, we're not doing that right now. Now I'm talking about carbon copy cloner, so I think everyone knows that, that they had, uh, uh, you know, kind of exited uh, what we'll call the, the personal space here and, uh, and the small bit business space. And so Retrospect can do all of the things that Carbon Copy can do. One of the things that, that is relatively new for us, that the car, um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of, uh, 
I am thinking of a different people. Carbon copy cloner is, is simple in that it's, it's what the name says. It's, it's doing copies. And so you're not getting backups. You're not getting all the, uh, the, the, the monitoring and, and the, the ability to do archives. And, and you're just not getting a full featured package, right? And Backblaze, it's a similar situation in that Backblaze is great. Retrospect works with Backblaze. We can back up to a Backblaze cloud but it's only in the cloud. And so you, you don't have the full three, two, one, right? You don't have the local backup that is much, you know, is definitely going to be what you want to go to for your first restore. If you can restore from a local, that's going to be a lot faster. So, but, but we work with Backblaze and have for a long time now. They were one of the first uh, cloud solutions we, we supported. And then we have another question that says, is the backup file standard file format or is it encrypted? Uh, he wants to receive some, uh, re retrieve some files and does not uh, seem to want some huge unpack zip or restore just to retrieve one photo. Sure. So we, we can do multiple things. So many people will do, and I'm, I'm putting air quotes around this, you know, because a lot of people don't call this a backup, but, 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 but we do. So you can do duplicates where you are copying your data from wherever the original source is to the Drobo as an example, right? This is your backup Drobo and there they are in their native file format. So if you wanted to browse over and grab that file, there it is. Uh, again, one of the downsides to a straight out copy is that you're not seeing the, the, the snapshots. You're not being able to go back farther in time. So, so you can also do both, right? You can do the, the duplicate to, to, to the Drobo so that you can get immediate access if you're just looking for that. But then you can also do the, the backups to an archive set that is, it's not a zip, but it, it is our proprietary format. It can be encrypted and therefore it can be protected against ransomware and other things like that. And that that, that can be a kind of a one-two punch for you. All right, perfect. And then there's another great question is, uh, as they're, and they're referring to the, the retrospect backups or uh, kind of how it works, is, is, it, is it an incremental backup or is it only copying the change files over? And, and we do uh, two different kinds of the, in, the, the incremental backup. So, so you can actually say, no, no, this backup, maybe you, for whatever reason, you wanna do uh, a full backup. You can set that up as part of your schedule, but the default solution is that we do incremental backup. So we're only backing up the files that have changed. We also have, uh, uh, file, a block level uh, based incremental backup where for large files, like if you've got a PST file, right, you're not wanting to back that whole file up since most of it is, is unchanged. And so we can only back up just the blocks that have changed in that, in those large files. Okay, then another question we have here is the Drobo product, is the retrospect product line, is it a, a one-time purchase or a, uh, a subscription base? Uh, currently, it, what we're doing is we sell one-time purchase. So we are looking at a subscription. We, we have plan on rolling that out soon because we understand a lot of people prefer a subscription-based solution. We're going to continue keeping the, the permanent license, right? It's just a, you, you get the option. If you want to buy a permanent license code or if you want to do the subscription, whichever works best for you and your budget. Um, for the permanent license codes, I, I just want to point out, you know, you, you get them, they, they that works forever, but uh, it doesn't um, it it doesn't uh, stop working. And uh, those are those include uh, upgrades for that year. So we, we usually come out with at least two releases, sometimes more a year. And so your your permanent license code is is good for upgrades throughout that period of time. All right, and then we have another uh, question here is, can you elaborate more on the backup or third party services such as Amazon S3? So what other uh, third-party backup services can are offered here. Um, you mean in terms of destinations? Correct. We yeah. have a website, and you know what? Um, if you go, let me let me go find where the the URL is for that. Because again, twenty something different uh, yeah. different different cloud providers. I don't I don't know them off the top of my head. We have it on our website. Uh, if you if you go to the website, and you go to um, the it's a it's a link down it's right at the bottom where it says cloud backup and it's got a big colorful icon with the retrospect cube and again uh if there's a specific one that you're wanting to know we could look it up but uh it's 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 a long it's a long list and then we have questions about the cloud uh provided cloud 
will the provided cloud be a for a fee? Yeah, obviously that would be with whatever third party you're working with. And in terms of HIPAA compliance, you'd have to check with that uh, third party service. So as JG just mentioned, there's a long list of 20 or so yeah, yeah. cloud based endpoints it syncs with. Uh, and, and thanks Randy, I, I also pasted in the cloud and, and I'm glad somebody else found it as well. So, so there, there's the, the URL for, for, for that list. And that is an expanding list. If there is, through some odd chance, some, some service that we haven't uh, certified yet, do let us know. We, we, continue to, uh, we continue to support that. And then uh, I think we have one more question here. It says, uh, what is the differences between the solo and then the different versions? Are there certain features that are key to certain uh, versions of retrospect? Uh, there, there are, I mean, solo, for example, does not have tape support, it, you know, that, that hopefully isn't too surprising. Um, again, if you go to the products page, it lists out the, the details and it has the, the standard thing where it says, okay, this is what's in all these things. Mostly it's about the fact that solo is intended to back up, you know, one machine, whereas the desktop and others are backing up more clients. And so again, I didn't really go into this in the demo. Maybe I should have. Uh, retrospect is going to run on uh, a machine. It doesn't have to be a server. It, I, my, my personal home backup and what we were looking at was a Mac mini. Uh, but you know, if you've got a bricks or some other uh, PC that we, we work on all those and then you can back up multiple machines and you install the client software. It's a small little package and, uh, and that backs up to that, to, to whatever that machine is. And again, it can back up to locally attached uh, storage be that Drobo or other drives. I mean, somebody I think mentioned QNAP, we're still doing support for all those things. Or you're going to back up to a NAS, or you're going to back up to, to tape or to cloud, all those things all work. All right, and then we have another question here. It says, um, how does the support work? Is it a one-time thing or how long does the support last? Is when I get a new product uh, or when you guys release a new version of Retrospect, will I need to get a new version of retrospect to continue the support for that? Or how does that work? The, the support works for one, well, the standard ASM support is for one year. And so when you buy the product, if it comes with ASM and most of them do, but it, you can also buy it separately, you buy the support and it's good for one year from that date. And that again includes all the updates that we put out throughout that time as well. So if, if you buy the product, um, if you buy the product today and in another two months we come out with a release, you'll get that product for free. You don't need to redo your support or anything. It just keeps on going for the year. And then you can continue to buy uh, the ASM. And in fact, this is what a lot of people do. It's kind of the poor man subscription model where they just keep buying ASM and therefore they keep getting the upgrades free as well as the, the technical support. Oh yeah, and we have another question here on the chat that says, uh, how often do you have to change the battery on the Drobo? So, we currently have not had any customer ask us to replace the battery. Uh, it is an internal battery. It's an USB battery that's just used for the power downs and in case there's a power failure. And it just finally writes the final writes to the block level and then it comes back up and it'll write it all to the storage. So it's not necessarily that you're gonna be replacing that battery. You'll probably be getting a new drobe by the time you have to even think about replacing that battery. So no worries about that internal battery. It's only there for the final rights in case of a power failure. Uh, we always recommend using an APC power backup as well, just you know, having a se separate uh, surge protector in front of it too. But you know, we, we protect you with that built-in battery as well. Let me see what else we have here. Uh, a list of all the pricing is available on Retrospect's website. We'll sh share that with you guys as well. Uh, that was another question we had. Um, Yeah, so the, the, someone asked again about pricing. Yeah, it is a, a one-time fee currently. They are working on subscription models for uh, Retrospect. And then a lot of people are asking about a device to device backup. JG, they're wondering when that feature will come or when we will have that feature ready. And by, by device to device, you mean where Retrospect's actually running on the Drobo itself? Right, and then writing to another Drobo. Right, and that is a, a, a feature that is in, in development as we speak. Uh, so I don't want to try and commit to a date at this time, but it's under active development. Yeah, so I mean, there's gonna be a lot of integrations between Drobo and Retrospect. So 
it just is going to get better with time. So that, that's one thing we want to really show you that the power of this backup software with the simplicity of our raid box, it's just going to become one of the best solutions out there in the market for backing up and protecting your data. It, it's just going to be a no brainer to kind of use Drobo as that solution with retrospect in it. So that, that's also one of the things we're looking into the subscription models of is making something with a Drobo that would have a subscription going on with it so that we can just have these things coming up. So we're gonna have more integrations coming further down the line. Obviously we, we've just sunk up, so we are trying to get these out as soon as possible. We know there's a number of features that people want. So uh, as well as in this chat, if you want any specific features, you can list them out here. We are taking everything you guys are telling us. Uh, it's, it's in our motto of store centric. We, we're all about the customer and we're all about developing products that make storage simpler for the end customer. Absolutely. All right, with that, I will go to the next slide here. Um, for any ones who didn't uh, get their question answered, JG and I will go through a lot of these and try and get as many answers out, maybe even do a QA and a little section to try and get as many of these answered. Um, so as far as the winner goes, we are using our tool to select that winner. And the winner is David Lind. So David, if you're listening to this, uh, please email marketing at drobo.com. Uh, they will get you your 5N2 and your copy of Retrospect desktop. Uh, I mean, it's a great offer and uh, we really hope that you enjoy it and uh, you do use uh, the product together. Uh, the other thing for those of you who didn't win, we didn't want to leave you empty handed as well. So we do have a, a discount code for Retrospect's website. So if you go to retrospect.com forward slash store and uh, type in the keyword at checkout uh, is uh, Drobo20 and you will get 20% off any of the uh, Retrospect softwares that you do purchase. So uh, JG, any final thoughts or final words from you on that? Uh, just thanks everyone for showing up and for all the great questions. I know that we didn't get everyone's questions answered, but we will go through and try and address each one's so later on. So thanks again for showing up. Yeah, so once again, from the whole store centric family, we want to really thank you for coming to the webinar and seeing a little bit about how Retrospect works with Drobo. Uh, so visit both websites, uh, drobo.com for any Drobo related products and retrospect.com for any of your backup needs. And uh, stay tuned for more integrations between both companies. And uh, we really want to thank you for your time today.